So something that is crucial in this life is the pace at which we move, right? It's important. Now, every Sunday morning, my favorite job that I get to do at the church is I'm one of the official greeters. So I get to shake your hand. I say, hey, how are you doing? And the biggest answer that I get is tired. Or number two at a close second is busy. And this is where so many people find themselves. We work, sometimes now we have side jobs. We have all these different things that are taking place in our life. And and very easily, this nice pace that we like to live, we start to move a little quicker. And it's like a power walk. I've seen y'all on the causeway doing those, got the two pound weights in your hand, swaying them back and forth. And, and we start to move and Thursday comes and we're like, I'm so tired. Friday comes, the work week is over and it's time to rest, Right. No, it's not because we have children. We have grandchildren. And before we know it, we realize, man, my life is out of control. It is fast. So what do we do? We drink Celsius. Some of you guys drink a lot of them, not just one, but two. And when two is not enough, we stop by Starbucks and we just start moving. And eventually we move so quickly. Oh, my break this thing. Here we go. We still, we're moving so quick. We're like, man, I wish I could just get off and, and rest. Anyone else just look at, ever looking for a breath sometime where I can just slow down and take a breath? We've all been there. And, and some of us are in this room right now and we're like, man, I am tired. There's someone online who's like, I was gonna come to church, but I was too tired, right? <laughs> so I'm just gonna watch online at home. I remember a few years ago, I was exhausted. At this point, I probably worked, I won't tell you how many hundreds, but hundreds of days straight in a row. I was absolutely exhausted. I was looking for energy and I had nothing to give. I just worked a 12 hour shift, actually a 12 hour job. I was outside all day long. I was super red, sunburnt, exhausted. And I'm laying on the floor of my house, that cold tile feeling. Y'all know that feeling. I've got my face on it because I was just like, oh, this feels so good. I'm just going back and forth and I'm exhausted, and I'm, and I'm literally talking to my wife. I'm like, can, can we just go to bed early tonight? I, I, am, I am so exhausted. I am so tired. And my kids come over, and they jump on me, and they, they, they ruin my moment of rest. But I remember feeling overwhelmed, feeling tired, and, and honestly feeling like, I don't know how I can do this anymore. And I remember praying to God. I'm like, God, Your word says that you will give me rest, Lord. Will you just please give me rest, Lord? In that moment, I felt like God answered that prayer. And he said, I have given you rest. You just won't take it. You just won't take it. And and this is where so many people find themselves of rest is available to you. Praise God. Amen. We just won't take it. This is where I lived for so long because If I'm honest with you, the idea of rest, it scared me. If I didn't rest or if I wasn't working, then I felt lazy. Like like some people, we we wear this badge of busyness as like an honor. I worked 80 hours. I worked more more than you. That's big in like blue collar jobs. It's like, how many hours did you work this week? 132, right? And and we wear this badge of, of honor, but I was afraid to rest because I've come to this conclusion in my mind, this was a long time ago, that if I was not producing, if I was not doing something, if I was not making myself useful, then I was useless. This is where I found myself. Here's what I can promise you is the enemy wants you busy because if you can't slow down to hear from God, then you're not gonna hear his voice. If, if you can't slow down to, to get into your word and to pray, then, then God's truth is just going to go right past you. So many people, they're like, man, what's my calling? What's my purpose? Well, so many of us are too busy to hear from God of what your purpose is, what your calling is. The enemy wants you busy because our world says, go, move. You're not doing enough. You're not making enough. You need a promotion. You have to achieve. You need more. But God says, stop. God says, rest. 
but not just to rest, but to rest in him. Rest in our culture, stopping in our culture is not trending. This is not a popular thing because we have so much important things to do, I guess. Maybe. Well, here's what I can tell you. If the devil can't get you to sin, he will make you busy. The idea of Sabbath, the idea of stopping, the idea of rest is a foreign concept in our world. A day to stop, a day to rest, this is unthinkable. We have jobs. Now we have side jobs. We have kids. We have college to pay for, college to attend, debt to pay off. We have all these different things, retirement to pay for and to prepare for. We have vacations to save for. And then we go on this vacation and we get home and we need a vacation from our vacation. God says, stop, stop. When I get to mentor men, one of my favorite things that they ask me, and they all ask the same thing. I wanna have a thriving relationship with God. I wanna be successful. I wanna be able to provide for my family. I wanna be a godly husband. And they tell me these dreams of success. Tell me these dreams of a thriving relationship with God. What do I do? It's very simple. There's two things that I tell them to do every single time. The first thing is to honor God with your finances. If you can tithe and put God, God on the throne of your finances, he will show himself true. Our God, when we sow, he multiplies. If I can trust God with my money, I can trust him with anything. Now, the number two thing that I tell him to do, if you can do that and take a Sabbath day, you will be rested, you will be successful, you will have a closeness to God. So many times people are like, Man, I haven't felt the presence of God in so long. I think Pastor Elena needs to get her worship better. I don't know what's going on. You cannot pin your, 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 furthest, your furthestness away from God. It's because we need to slow down. We need, we need to have a day with God. We need to have a day where the spirit of God can actually pour into us. So in this message, we're gonna be talking about the Sabbath. What does it mean but before we get into that, I'm going to talk about what is the Sabbath not? What is it not? The first thing is it's not a legalistic observance. It's not a ritualistic focus thing where you, you have to do this. You have to do this. You, you can't do this. And there's all these steps that you have to do. Or I wake up at six o'clock and then I light a candle and then I say this prayer and I don't drive my car and I don't cook. It's not ritualistic and it's not legalistic. It's not a day to indulge. It's not irrelevant. It, it, this is relevant to you today. This is something that you need. It's not a day where you just lay in bed and sleep for 12 hours straight and you're just, yes, Lord, fill me. It, it's, it's not a day for that. It, it doesn't lack flexibility. It can move around. It, it doesn't have to be a Sunday. It can be a Saturday or a Friday. Mine's on a Friday. It can be on a Tuesday. It, it's okay if there is an emergency. Emergencies happen. I have to take this. I, this is important. I need to do this. But if there's an emergency every single time you're on a Sabbath, you're probably a poor manager, right? So this is, this is a day for us to help other people, to have a closeness with God. Now, the Sabbath, what is it? The Sabbath is a day to stop what we normally do and realign our life with God and allow him to fill us up. So many of us in our life, we're trying to pour into our spouses, we're trying to pour into our children, trying to pour into the relationships around us from an empty cup. And we feel like, man, I've got nothing to give. What we need to do is to stop and allow the spirit of God to fill us up. So many of us in this room, if we're being honest, we're pouring from an empty cup. We're working from an empty cup. We're parenting from an empty cup. And we're like, man, I don't, I don't have the energy to discipline my children. Well, you need to get along with God and let him fill you up, right? Let him fill you up. Now, the word Sabbath in the Hebrew, it simply means to rest or to cease. So, so why would God want us to stop? Why would he want you to stop? 
because it frees you from the pace of this world and he invites you to rest in him. If God rested on the seventh day, you need rest too. You need rest too. So, so let's get specific. What is Sabbath? What is it? The first thing is it's a day to stop. Stop emailing. Stop making phone calls. Stop making work calls. Just stop working. Maybe if you're a stay-at-home mom and, and your job is taking care of the household and stop doing laundry, stop doing dishes. Husbands, this would be a great opportunity for you to step in and to fold some laundry. And I promise you it'll be a great Sabbath night for you in Jesus' name. So <laughs> now here's the thing. We are all limited. And this is something that we do not like to hear. And if you think you aren't limited, what I can promise you is you're lying to yourself. Because what happens a lot of times is we take on more, we go longer than we should. The sooner that you can admit that you're limited, the sooner that you'll be able to experience the joy, the peace, and the rest that you are starving for. Just stop. It's an, it's an invitation. Stop doing for yourself and give the day to the Lord. So the first thing is it's a day to stop. The next thing is it is a day to rest. It's a day to, how many of y'all want some rest in here? Hey, some of y'all are lying in church right now, not raising your hand. This doesn't mean that you just sleep all day or watch Netflix all day for the glory of God. No, sure, you can take a nap. You can take a nap, but you need to do stuff that re-energizes you, that fills your cup. Now, I have three daughters, six, four, and one and a half. Those toddlers are crazy if they do not get their nap, right? They, it's like a mini terrorist just terrorizing my home at all times. If they do not get their nap, it is a problem. Now, one of two things are going to happen. At 5.30, she will crash and burn out if she does not get her nap. She'll fall asleep at 5.30 and my night is ruined because now she's not going to bed till 10 or 10.30 or 11. My day is absolutely ruined. Now, the other thing that happens is if she doesn't get her nap, she fights us. She, she's angry. She, she, everything is a problem. She's thrown on the ground crying. It, it's a problem, Right? This is just like a lot of us if we don't get rest. We're like grown toddlers throwing tantrums. We're like, man, why does no one want to hang out with me? Maybe you just start drama and, and you're just so tired and, and you're negative all the time and you, you just need to go and rest. But it's a day to rest, to do things that re-energizes you. So for me on my Sabbath, the things that I love to do is I love to get outside. I love to get out in God's creation. I love to mow my yard. My, my greatest dream is when I retire is just to ride on a tractor all day long and, and just cut grass. It's a spiritual thing, but I'll get on my mower and I'll ride it and I just rest. I, I look at the beauty. I, I, I hear the birds. I, I, I think, I pray, I worship. My neighbors before, they, they stop me. They're like, what are you singing? I'm like, I'm singing some worship. You need to get on this. But, but I'll get outside I might have a longer workout. I might go play some golf once in a while. And the husband said, amen. amen. We get out there, do something that re-energizes you, things that refuel you. I get alone with God for a longer period of time. This is a day to not earn a living. This is a day to rest. So some people say, what do you do on the Sabbath? The better question is, is what do you not do on the Sabbath? I don't work. So I want you to ask yourself and, and to identify right now, what is the things that fills you up? What are the things that re-energizes you? What, what gives you the rest that you have been looking for? And, and here's the truth. If, if you can't rest from it, you are enslaved by it. If you can't rest from your job, if you can't rest from your phone, put it on do not disturb for a day, not check it, not check emails, not do, if, if, then you might be enslaved by it. It might help your mental health. It may make you feel less anxious. Actually, it will. There are plenty of studies. Go and Google it. But if we can't rest from it, then we are enslaved by it. 
The next thing, what is the Sabbath? Is It is a day to delight, to delight in the goodness of God. One of the Hebrew words for delight is Eden. Eden, like, like the garden of Eden. To delight in the Lord is like creating a mini garden of Eden around you. In, in the garden of Eden, God's presence wasn't just there. It was tangible where Adam and Eve walked hand in hand with God. This is a day where you can enjoy the presence of God. God's presence is with you. I promise you. But so many of us are so busy, we can't feel it. God is always speaking, but we're not always listening. Because we have our AirPods in and we're listening to something else, right? Just, just rest. Delight in the goodness of God. Have gratitude in your heart. So many of us are, are, are so discontent with this life because we, we haven't shown gratitude to God. It's a day where we can step back and, and look at all the things that God has blessed us with. You may, you may be like, well, I don't know what I have. You've got a lot more than other people. You have breath in your lungs. You, you have the creation around you. you. And just list it. God, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for all the things that you've done for me. So it's a day to delight. And it's a day to worship. This is a holy day set apart and dedicated to God himself. It's a day where we can worship God and cultivate a, and cultivate a spirit of worship that we can carry with us all week long. This is a holy day. It's like this China. This might not be China. I think this is from Walmart. But this right here, it's set apart. It has little Christmas trees on it. This is our Christmas day plates. It comes down one time a year. This morning I was in the attic getting it. And my wife's like, do not break that plate or I will break you. So I'm not going to break this plate. But this right here, this, is, this plate is holy. Holy simply means set apart. It's away from everything. And it only comes down once a year. And once a year, our entire family comes together. We make memories. We have a great meal that's what the Sabbath is. It's, it's, it's separate. It's separate. It's a day to rest. It's, it's holy. But I want you to know that God doesn't just invite you to eat from it from one day a year. He invites you to eat from it every week, but also every single day. Rest. Here's, here's the truth. So many people are working themselves to death and they don't even realize it. They're working so hard. Everybody knows somebody that, Maybe it's someone in your family or, or someone that you're close with who's had a heart attack and, and you hear like, man, why do they have a heart attack at the age of 45? And the doctor's like, well, you're just so stressed from your job. You need to limit your stress. Listen, people are letting their physical health, their mental health, their spiritual health to go by the wayside in the name of work. It's time to stop. Literally stop and allow God to refill you to rejuvenate you, to realign your heart with his. And the best thing with God, he doesn't just invite you to a day. He invites you to a lifestyle of rest. A lifestyle to, to actually rest in him. I love this, this passage in Matthew 11. It says, come to me. This is an invitation. Come, all who are weary and burdened and need a nap and are overstimulated by children and, and just need rest. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the yoke that he's talking about, it's not the egg. This is a tool. I want to show you this tool. So this is what ox, oxen would, 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 would use. And a lot of us were, now when the oxen are together and they are in this yoke, they can carry so much more. They can do so much more. They can pull so much more. And a lot of us were in this yoke all alone. We're trying to do everything in our own power. We're trying to do everything in our own strength. And we feel like our wheels are just constantly turning. What Jesus is saying, he's saying, Come, invite me in. Let me get into this with you. I will teach you my ways. Because in my weakness, he is strong. 
When I feel like I can't do it, he's in the yoke with me. When, when, I, when I need wisdom or I need discernment, I have him right by my side. You don't have to do this life alone. Get into the yoke with Jesus. So why is the Sabbath so important? The first thing is this. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. This is actually a commandment. It's the fourth commandment, and it's actually the longest commandment. It's almost like God knew that we would fight it or something like that. All the other, all the other commandments are like, don't lie, don't steal, don't covet, don't murder, very quick. This one is four verses. Exodus 20, it says this. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall, you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor male or female servant, nor your animals, nor foreign res foreigners residing in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in, in, that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day because the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Aren't you glad since we're under grace, we don't have to follow the Ten Commandments anymore? I guess we can murder and steal and commit adultery and, and lie and build an altar in our living room that isn't our television. No. This is the only commandment that Christians are okay with breaking. And, and we don't even think about it. We don't even feel bad about it. Yes, we do not keep the Ten Commandments to be saved. You're, you're right. We're under grace. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. But I can promise you this. When you live your life God's way, there are blessings and, when, and there are consequences when we don't. we don't. We don't want to lie, right? We don't want to steal. We don't want to commit adultery. We don't want to murder. Th then why don't we rest one day a week? Why not? And the reason is, is because we have other things more important than allowing God to fill us up. The next thing is, it's a witness to the world. It's a witness to the world. For thousands of years, the greatest witness that there was a God was that we kept the Sabbath. Exodus 31, 14, it says, Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who, not, those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. So in the Old Testament, it carried the death penalty, along with adultery and, and murder and dis being disobedient to your to your parents. So if you ever want to use this as a disciplinary tool with your kids, you could say, if we were in the Old Testament, do you know what I could do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. God isn't going to put you to death. But many of us, by being enslaved by work, being enslaved by achieving, we are actually putting our own selves to death. We're putting our own selves to death. Verse 15 and 16, for six days, work is to be done. Some of us are professional Sabbathers and we need to go get a job, okay? So <laughs> get out of your mom's basement and go get a job. But the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, ce celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. As a lasting covenant, this is perpetual. This means until no end, forever. This is a sign and a witness forever. Verse 17, it will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. How could God be refreshed? Well, for six days, he worked. For six days, he created how does God create? He creates by speaking, right? Put out. Now, now the Hebrew word for refreshed means he breathed in. So for six days, he spoke, he breathed out. And on the seventh day, he breathed in. How many times have you ever said, man, I wish I could just catch my breath. God set it up so you can catch your breath every single week. And for some reason, we feel like it isn't for us. Yes, we're not under the law, but the Ten Commandments are principles for us to live a blessed life. 
Ezekiel 20, 12, it says also, I gave my Sabbath as a sign between us so that they would know that I, the Lord, made them holy. It's a covenant, right? Now, in, in the fast food world, there's a restaurant that's closed every Sunday. What is it? Everybody knows it's closed on Sunday. Some of us, the only time we ever want Chick-fil-A is on Sunday. And, but here's the thing that I love about Chick-fil-A. Everybody knows that they're a Christian company. It's a witness, right? And they are, this fast food, the best profits, they make the most money, all of these different things, but they're off one day a week. How does that work? Just like we talked about last week, it's called God math. It, it doesn't make sense, right? It's God math. But everybody knows it's a witness. It, it can be the same thing for us in our life. The next thing is this, is God is serious about it. It's serious. Numbers 15, 32, it says, while the Israelites were in the wilderness, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath day. He was just gathering sticks. Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron in the whole assembly and they kept him in custody because it was not clear what, they, what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must die. The whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. So the assembly took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord commanded Moses. God is serious about it. How many of us are in here slowly putting ourselves to death by not resting one day a week? Maybe God wants you to live until you're 85 or 90, but because you have overwhelmed your heart and your soul and your life so much, we're gonna die at the age of 60 or 65. Now, I remember growing up, my mom modeled the Sabbath in a great way. She, she, we, we, I kind of made fun of her. I called it her mental health day. So that everyone knew about mom's mental health day in the family, and this was a big deal to her, and I didn't understand it at the time. But I remember one time in particular, probably six years ago, I was trying to take her out to Lucky Dill for, for, for a birthday dinner, and we just couldn't get our schedules to match. So we pulled out our notes finally, we look at our schedule, and we're like, okay, how about this day? No, I'm busy. All right, what about this day? No, I can't. And then, all right, how about this Thursday right here? She's like, no, I can't, I have nothing scheduled. And I was like, well, perfect. Let, let's go on that Thursday. And she's like, no, 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 I have nothing scheduled. I said, I heard you, it sounds like a great day. <laughs> There is nothing on my schedule that, that is scheduled. I cannot. I was like, oh, it's your mental health day. I get it. So eventually we, we finally found a date and we go out and she goes, let me tell you why this is so important. Because for so long I, I was raising kids, I was working, I was doing all this stuff and I was working so hard, I was literally making myself sick. Literally. Literally making myself sick. I felt like I was putting myself to death. This is important. We need to be refilled. This isn't like a self-love in our culture thing where it's just like, it's all about you. No, no, no. But we need God to fill us up. The last thing is this, is God made the Sabbath for your benefit. I want you to know that the Sabbath is not a burden. It's a blessing. Rest is a blessing. Mark, Mark 2, 27. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You weren't made to sleep all day, okay? You weren't made to, to just play video games all day and just, no, no. But the Sabbath is for you. It's made to serve you because for you and I, we work from a place of rest. We love from a place of rest. We pour into our children from a place of rest. There's a reason why Sunday is the first day of the week where we get in God's presence where we can prioritize our week and, and say, well, this is what we're going to do and get together. Here's what I can promise you. In your life, if you start to practice a Sabbath in your life and say, you know what? We're putting it on the calendar. We're gonna make it Sunday. We're gonna make it Saturday. Whatever it may be, your life will completely change. I promise you. You wanna feel the presence of God in your life? Sabbath. You wanna feel closeness to his spirit? Sabbath. You want God to restore your marriage? Sabbath, because a lot of us in our marriages, we, we don't have the energy for our spouse. That's what some people say, I'm just, I'm just too tired. Make a date night part of your Sabbath. This, 
rejuvenate your relationships with your kids, with, with friends, with distant family members. It's important. Now, I remember for, for a long time, and I'm still, this is still something I struggle with. It's still something that I struggle with. For a long time, I, I didn't Sabbath for years and years and years. And eventually I found myself at a place where I was like, I don't know what to do. I, I'm, I'm, my wheels are spinning. I'm so tired all the time. I, I don't feel close to God. I, I work 50 hours a week at the church. And then, I, and then I have a side job and a side business and all these different things. And God told me clear as day, you need to get away from your side business and just get away from it. And I was like, well, God, I really rely on that. I don't know how I'm gonna, just step away from it. God provided, God showed up in amazing ways. He's still doing it to this day. And, and in the beginning of the year, if you've been here, I was really sick in the beginning of the year. And I felt like God was saying, now it's time for you to stop. Now it's time for you to rest. You have some Sabbaths that you owe me. So that was a very intentional time where I had to stop. I, I was extremely sick. I had no energy, I, all these different things, but God showed me the importance of rest. So, so what do you need to do? What do we need to do? Where do we start? First thing we do is we pick a day and we take it off from work. I'm not gonna email. I'm not gonna take any work calls. I'm, I'm gonna take it off. Now, for some people, we have young children and we're like, I, this is not possible. I'm working 24 seven all the time. Just start where you are. Maybe it's a part of your day and it's for four or five hours and, you, and this is an opportunity to pour into your kids. Hey, for the next four hours, we're going to make this about Jesus. We're going to rest. We're gonna do something together as a family. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do things that refresh you. What are the things that refreshes you, that refuels you, that re-energizes you? I've heard someone say, put it like this before. Imagine your best day ever. Maybe for you, your best day ever is to get with family, or to get with some friends or to have a cookout, or maybe it's, it's to take a nap and then go on a walk. Whatever your best day is, that's your Sabbath. That's your Sabbath, it's a celebration. The next thing is have an extended time of prayer and Bible reading. You know, sometimes we do these drive-by morning devotions with God and we read the, the scripture of the day. That's, what, that's good, but stop. Get into the God's word, get into his presence. Delight in the goodness of God. Give God an opportunity where you can realign your life, your heart, and your soul with God. And what I can promise you, church, is your life will look completely different. Where we're not going at the pace of the world, where we're running around and we're constantly chugging Red Bulls and I need more coffee and I'm, I'm out of energy, but I'm able to walk in the peace of God. My mom is one of the most peaceful people I know. She has so much joy there. Sometimes I'm like, can you have a little bit less peace and like get a little more urgency in your step? And you know, she's unhurried because when you're unhurried, you have an opportunity to stop and allow God to speak to you. When you're unhurried, you have an opportunity to stop and allow God to use you. Stop, just stop. Now, rest is hard, but it takes, it takes, it takes courage to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. So if you're in here today and you say, you know what, I wanna do this. I, I want to prioritize my life around God with my time. I want more rest. I need more rest. I'm tired. Someone online is at home because they were too tired to come to church today. So if you're in here today and you say, you know what, I need more rest in my life. I wanna pray for you. Just raise your hand and I wanna say a prayer for you. All right, I'm gonna pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray for the people who are raising, your hand, raising their hand right now. God, give them rest. Give them strength, God. Let them get off the pace of this world and get on a pace that you want us to be on, God. Let us practice rhythms of rest every single day, God. But God, let us keep the Sabbath holy. Give us strength to do this, God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that when we put you first, you always bless, God. You, you always show up. So give them supernatural blessing, God. Let them feel your presence on a daily basis, Lord. Fill up their cup today, Jesus, but fill up their cup every week, God. In your name I pray. Amen. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, what I want to do real quick is maybe, maybe you're in here today. Maybe you're in here and you've been looking for rest. You've, you've been looking for hope. You've been looking for joy and in your life. You feel like, man, my life is out of control. I want you to know that there's something available to you. It's called a relationship with Jesus. 
He took on everything for you. you, you your, your sins, your past, your present, your future sins. And there's a gift available to you today and it's called salvation. You know, if you're in here today and you wanna put your faith in Jesus, I wanna pray for you. So on the count of three, just raise your hands. One, two, three, and I wanna pray for you, amen. Amen, you can put your hands down. So if you raise your hand, what I want you to do is just have a, have a conversation with God. Our God is a relational God. Just begin to talk to him and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me from the things that I've done. Today, I'm changing the goal of my life and I'm running after you. Declare your Lordship over your life right now. Lord Jesus, I pray for the people that are receiving you as their Lord and Savior right now. God, I pray, God, that you would create in them a new heart, a heart that's ready to do your will. Today, God, we ask for forgiveness for how we've lived. And today we change the goal of our life. It's not just about us, it's about you. Today, God, we declare that you are our God and our Savior, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen.